Hey there, hi there, and welcome to the Boundaries edition of my tarot card reading uh, channel. Um, I think just boundaries is such a huge topic these days um, and how things can evolve over time. Um, or lessons that can be learned. So I'm going to make a game out of it. Alrighty. So this is the Boundaries Tarot Card Game Edition. And we have card one is Refreshing Oasis. You have the unicorn and the donkey. And it says, Nurture yourself, gather your strength. Okay. So that's uh, Boundaries card number one so that will be a whole theme and then we have card number two over here there's actually two cards to this okay so there is Kaladahara okay she's the goddess of good judgment of aesthetics and behind this card is this is the world of dreams so that's going to be a dream uh, goddess, uh, card reading. Okay. And then over here, I have reparenting yourself, setting up boundaries for yourself, uh, to prevent yourself from self-sabotage and also setting boundaries with loved ones. Um, so that you are not, um, overworking yourself or overwhelming yourself. Okay. So those are the three themes of this reading and you can choose which one you're drawn to and we'll get started in just a minute all right hi card number one so if you chose this card that means you are up for an energetic upgrade okay in other words you need to refresh your habitat your home in other words um your environment basically the place where you live needs um maybe a fresh new coat of paint or some sprucing up um you know adding some really cool tapestries or uh, flowers or plants or herbs or even just like little DIY decorative um, you know items around your home just to kind of uplift your spirits I just recently got this uh, for Christmas it's the maiden the mother and the crone statue alrighty so that was maybe like eight dollars give or take um, and this really brings me a lot of great energetic upgrades. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, you know, so do you do, you do you, you do what things you're drawn to. If you're drawn to certain, um, statues or cards or crystals, then you buy those things for yourself. It doesn't matter the cost. I mean, these days you have Sheen, you have Tamu. Those are like the cheapest places to find really cool things, um, that you can be really drawn to. And, um, if you can't find it there and you want to go for something a little more, more, um, you know, uh, expensive on the more expensive tastes, then you could try Amazon. Um, definitely more expensive, but worth it if that's what you want to spend your money on. So, um, for instance, you know, I have this lovely crystal here. It's purple and gold like. Um, then I have this little bracelet here. And also I have the little unicorn horn as well. And Let's talk about this card. So first you have the number 18. So I feel like for a lot of you, the number 18 can be very significant because um, it could mean that maybe on your 18th birthday, something really um, life-changing happened for you. Maybe you got your license or you um, got your first job or you even graduated high school and you were about to go off to college. But either way, something really life-changing um, happened for you as you transitioned into the traditional sense of adult or the, you know, societal version of what it means to become an adult. For some people, they become very independent and learn how to take care of themselves way before 18. For other people, they learn to become an adult later in life at age 35. 
for other people they go their whole life acting like a donkey <laughs> and never growing the fuck up okay so for you I feel like you are one of those people that's a beautiful unicorn energy you know how to nurture yourself you know how to gather your own strength and you're very wise and your spirit and your aura this beautiful green earthy light aura can illuminate those around you and I feel like for a lot of you sometimes it does help the donkey like people that are dumbasses that need a little kick in the kabuti to get them going you know um like if you ever watch chef ramsey house kitchen he'll always call his cooks that are acting like dumbasses donkeys okay so that's kind of you the overall feel and energy of this card is you're very much a unicorn you are very, pretty much born a unicorn energy and you have to lead the donkeys to the water sometime and you have to lead people you're a leader you're not always going to get your followers to drink your water they're not always going to like and subscribe to your channel they're not always going to um heart your pages or leave you nice comments or wish you happy birthday but that's not your problem your problem is just to keep up the unicorn a healthy green beautiful aura energy and the rest will come in as it is needed also behind this and this is what you learned okay at 18 years old or whatever 18 version of adulthood was for you you learned this okay and my shadow shows me when my love needs to be sent exactly your shadow self is a unicorn okay hold on a second um so i feel like for a lot of you you know i'm i'm just like so sick and tired of some people being like oh light and uh light and love always or whatever it's like it's it's so fake. It's so phony. It's not realistic. It actually is realistic. It's a mindset. Okay. And when we talk about the shadow work and the shadow self, that's not saying like, oh, go be bad and do bad things to people or go treat yourself the opposite of nourishing and the opposite of strength and go waste your energy with toxic people and be super shallow. No, it's actually telling you that your shadow self is that like inner part of yourself that needs good nurturing. It needs good food. It needs good um, environment. It needs, um, you know, the basics, the essentials, you know, a working stove, a roof over your head, heat, hot water, um, just the basics. And then building off of that into expanding more of like your creative side, your, your, um, more <laughs> in tune with building your safety and your environment and your surroundings. Okay. It's not talking about go out and party and hang out with a bunch of strangers and like get drunk. That's not shadow work. That's you just going off and partying and not nurturing yourself and treating yourself good. And also, you know, some people are born unicorns. Some people are just born with the ability to shine through despite the darkness. Some people are born with wisdom. Some people are born leaders. Okay. Others need a little like, you know, kick in the pants or whatever, so to speak, to get them motivated and get them going. There's no, no one is, no one person is better than the other, but it's a mindset. And it's a metaphor for teaching you, like, treat yourself like a unicorn and others will see you doing that and they'll respect you and they'll be motivated to do the same for themselves. It's not saying, like, oh, this person was born rich and she parades all her richy, glamorous lifestyle all over the internet and she wants mad viewers. It's like she's obviously compensating for something, okay? Her world is not perfect. Nobody's world is perfect. There's still war. There's still famine. There's still disease. There's still lies. There's still deceit. There's still wickedness in the world that she has to maneuver and she has to go around in order to survive and keep up with her luxurious style, okay? Okay, so, you know, it can get a little boring after a while to watch someone post or whatever, a bunch of good stuff happening to them, but that's just their way of showing you that they're fighting through the bullshit, they're fighting through the chaos, and they're still making every single day count, each and every day count, they're savoring each and every day, it's a new year, it's a new month, it's a new week, it's a new day, whatever it is, they're starting it off with love and light in their heart every single day, if they're listening to five hours of meditation tonight and waking up refreshed and renewed, 
renewed, ready to go, then that's awesome. And that's motivating. And that's cool. And that's badass. We shouldn't be downplaying that and saying, oh, it's fake. It's phony. No, it's not fake and phony. It's real. They're really doing it. Yeah, sure. There are people that got handed a bunch of shit and then they're like, just like to brag about it and they don't do anything nice for people and they're super shitty human beings. They're super shallow and they're super toxic. You are going to go where your heart is led to go. If you sense someone is being shallow and fake with you and they don't really have anything to offer you in your life, pass them by, keep on moving. But if you see someone out there pushing through the shit and pushing through the storm and savoring each day and loving each new year and talking about soul and mind and spirit and body and how to motivate yourself and how to keep going every day, despite not being born into wealth, despite having shitty stuff happening all around them, then that's cool. And that should be respected, not, you know, hated on or whatever. And that's why, again, we have, you're a unicorn. You love doing what you love to do. And sometimes you get a couple donkeys hanging around your oasis and you're like, eh, I'm good. No, thank you. I'm going to hang over out here in the shade. Don't want to participate with your donkey ass energy. And that's your choice. And that's your business. And, you know, eventually the other unicorns will come hang out with you and you won't have to hang out with the donkeys anymore. But, you know, for the time being, you do what you got to do. You love yourself. And the shadow work, I hate when people say your shadow work is like, basically like you admitting that your life sucks or something or you're not perfect or just trying to intimidate you or dim your light or whatever like fuck that no your shadow work is you owning your shit and trying to savor each day and solve your own shit on your own and yeah it's okay to ask for help if you don't get it you know you don't get it you're meant to do it alone whatever the case may be but you know what that's some other people's personal choices to not, you know, sh you know, share their love and light with you or whatever. They probably don't have love and light to begin with. So why waste your energy and time with them? Okay. Now let's move on from that. I feel like I already went on a little rant slash tangent there with that. So let's see how we're going to refresh our oasis. So we have Yamota. Emocha, okay, star seed, yeah, star seed, here we go. So, a star seed, you know, you weren't born to, you know, uh, <laughs> be all dark and depressing and like, woe is me, let me talk about how life sucks or whatever. No, you are meant to shine your light and share your love and put it toward the soul tribe, the other star seeds like you, the other mermaids like you, that unicorns like you, magical beings like you, that want to see a better world, that hope for that. And the only way you can really get there is if you create that for yourself. If you refresh your oasis, nurture yourself, okay? Uh, then you have Numo, Nomo, change. The twins here, Numo and Nomo, and they're like intertwined here okay changing okay these two um they might be twins but they're very they're like complete polar opposites you have numo and nomo okay and the ever-flowing change and the ever-flowing like energy that is around you it's like yin and yang almost it's like you have like these two like opposing energies okay one energy is this is how i want you to refresh your oasis this is how i want you to gather your strength so you could have different ways and versions of that for instance nurturing yourself can be thought of as more of a metaphor for nurturing your soul or it can be an actual thing of like feeding your body right or your spirit right is like that more like craving knowledge and new information and adventure right so that could be where you're leaded as well so these two numo and nomos um they're ever changing so your goals could be ever changing and i'm so sick and tired of people saying well what are your goals and then you're like well 
today my goal is to have a nice meal and sit down and enjoy time with my family. Tomorrow my goal could be to go get toilet paper. I don't know. I take it day by day. That's your how you see the world. That's how you uh, envision a life and a future for yourself by not overstressing and not over analyzing and not over fantasizing or contemplating what could be, what could be, what could be. You're living in the present. You're living in now. And people are saying, well, you're going to have so many goals. You're going to get so much this. Or that's going to happen for you. That's coming for you. That's happening for you. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I get it. I get it. Abundance is coming for me. Great. Awesome. Can't wait. But I have abundance now, too. You know what I mean? Like, I have good energy now. And I'm going to use that good energy now to fuel me till my next day and my next day and my next or my next year or whatever. And I know how to already do that. So I'm not concerned with Oh, it's abundance coming, abundance coming. It's like, it'll come when it's meant to, but I'm not focusing on that. And I'm not making my whole world revolve around that anymore. Because <laughs> I've learned things, sorry. <laughs> like, so we're going to figure that out now. Yeah, freedom. This is what you've learned. Right, freedom. You've learned how to, f the freedom of expression, the freedom of being yourself. Like, you have seen things like star seed mermaid energy right so anyways i don't know how much time i have or memory i have on this thing but whatever i'll just do part one part two anyways so right freedom um of course you've already learned freedom of expression like you already know the way the world works you've seen it year after year after year the only new world that really can exist for any one person isn't like say oh end of war and a fem and disease that's never gonna happen even with a technology that ain't never happened um so you have the new world so the new world comes from within yourself it's a feeling you set for yourself every day it's a goal you set for yourself every day it's not like oh am i gonna win my court case i mean i'll probably win all my court cases because i don't need anyone telling me that because whatever the outcome is the outcome that was meant to be that's where the real intelligence comes from okay um unless someone had a dream where they literally saw what happened and then it actually happened i don't want to hear it okay <laughs> like, i might be a tarot card reader or whatever but i'm also like you know <laughs> i'm not i didn't just you know, I wasn't born yesterday, okay? I was born January 14th, 1993, to be exact, but I wasn't born yesterday, <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, um, I would have been born a few days ago, but that was 31 years ago, so. Um, anyways, so your new world comes from creating your new body, your new mind, and your new spirit, and creating that beautiful, like, evolution of magic living within you, and opening the door to that spiritual evolution, okay, and, um, refreshing your oasis can come from, um, herbal stuff, gardening, um, and it can come from, you know, got, getting a new tarot card deck that, like, in, feed your mind and your spirit and his beautiful paintings and interpretations of magic and um mixing magic with realism and it's just so beautiful and wonderful and this is what gives you freedom honestly it's just being yourself being your expressive self and you can see all these people down here moving in the shadows they haven't woken up to that light yet. They haven't walked up to that beautiful disco ball of light hanging in the sky and, you know, spread their joy and their happiness, you know, for themselves. They haven't done that yet. But they will. I mean, maybe. I don't know. It depends. It doesn't matter, honestly. Whatever they end up doing is their own personal journey, not your personal growth, not your personal journey. So don't waste your time wondering if they're ever going to get there. Who cares? Just think, like... <laughs> You can want them to get there, but do you have a magic crystal ball that's going to say they're actually going to get there? No, you don't. So don't fill your head with that idea, okay? <laughs> um, manifester, creation. You are a manifester. You manifest your own future. You manifest your own life. Um, you know that this, like the serpent, the snake from, you know, going all the way back to like biblical times was a symbol of evil, demonic uh, whatever that's just oppression that's just somebody trying to suppress your creativity and your own knowledge and your own wisdom of yourself that you hold within yourself we're all intuitive beings we just need to tap into it you um create your 
own beautiful magic here, okay? And you're the manifester of your own destiny, really. What you want to create in the world, what you want to express in the world, you got to get up and do it. No one's going to do it for you. So that's kind of what's happening here is in order for you to really refresh your oasis, in order really for you to create that balance within yourself and um, move forward into the future, you know, and create that new world for yourself is by manifesting it, by nurturing yourself, by gathering your strength here, okay? And then you have here um, the Sarumya Awa Nurture. Again, nurturing your starseed energy, okay? Like, starseed energy is all about you being born into this, like, star quality about yourself, where you see yourself as your own beacon of light, where you see yourself as your own beacon of hope. It's not about seeing anyone else as that. Yeah, there's other people out there in the world that might motivate you or might be a mentor to you or a good ear to listen to or a good coach. But like at the end of the day, you have to coach yourself into believing it. You have to believe it for you, not for anyone else. If you inspire others, great. If not, oh well. It doesn't matter. You still have to be your true authentic self and you have to nurture that part of yourself and love that part of yourself regardless of whether anyone else is going to do it for you. And then you have alchemy here, choices. Okay, you have choices to make here. Your choices affect the people around you. And if you make the right choice, then you can be lead it down a beautiful path to a refreshing oasis where you're allowed to nurture yourself, where you're allowed to trust yourself, where you're allowed to support yourself, where you're allowed to gather your strength when need be. Um, you have to choose that path for yourself though. You can always choose a different path where you're trusting other people with your safety and your security and they're not delivering and you know that this isn't the right choice for yourself anymore because you don't feel safe you don't feel secure and you have to move past that now and you have to go into this refreshing oasis that you have to create for yourself no one's going to do it for you okay you got to do it for yourself um okay so um again you have alchemy here you have choices here so make the right choice lead with your heart okay people are going to support your choices um and encourage you to make the choices that they think might be best for you but like the only people who are really going to be of true help to you when you're nurturing yourself and you're gathering your strength are going to be the people who love and support you and they're going to prove that they love and support you when you're in a time of need to nurture yourself and you're in a time of need to gather your strength and they're there for you um the people who do not love and support you are not gonna be there and it's just plain and simple it's not either or it's not it's called consistency it's called healthy relationship for a reason because it's consistent because it's stable okay um you also have here uh, quad de Mara initiation. Okay. So you are being initiated into a higher, like frequency, a higher light, a higher self, uh, consciousness and awareness. Um, this isn't because, um, you are like, this, this isn't because you, um, you have like all of these, I don't feel like it has something, I don't think it has to do with you um, being like tangled up in something and being like forced into this initiation. I feel like this is a support system that you have all around you. Because you can see here, she's not like stressed out or worried about uh, about anything really. It's not like she isn't like, oh, I'm so scared about what's happening here no she's literally being initiated into this light and these are all like security and support here i feel like i don't think this is her being like tangled up in something and not being aware of it not being self-aware i think she's very aware of what's happening okay and last but not least actually i'm just kidding this is the last but not least i have one more card for you okay you have Azerki 
Dabaran. Okay, this is gratitude, okay, and this is gratitude for the beautiful world that you are creating, for the beautiful oasis that you are creating for yourself. You're nurturing yourself, you're loving yourself, all parts of yourself, this higher being self, goddess. When I think of shadow self, I think of my goddess self. I do. I think of my goddess ass, badass energy that's got to kind of stand up and fight for me, right? <laughs> so kind of stand up for yourself. That's like, I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not going to be pushed in a corner. Don't put baby in the corner, right? Um, and that's kind of what's happening here. Okay. Um, and then you have here, she's like totally accepting of all this energy. She's welcoming it into her life. She wants this endless, beautiful, like energy that is her new world that she's creating for herself and manifesting for herself. And she's doing this by loving and nurturing all aspects of herself and being grateful that these are parts of her and that she's welcoming it into her life and this energy into her, her life. Okay, so, um, yeah, we have here, um, Ancherita, solitude, okay, your oasis is your place of solitude, okay, you know, I, some people say, like, come out of hiding, or, like, come out of the shadows, or whatever, like, I don't think you need to come out of anything other than your own way, like, you if you're if you like solitude and you're super introverted like me then maybe that's where you want to stay for now maybe you're not fully comfortable um sharing all of your information and all your private life with people who is who really is except for real housewives right so that's what i'm saying not everyone was made to like go out there and become a reality star not everyone wants to do that or maybe it's just not who you are as a person and that's okay you only have to do what you're comfortable with so follow the light here if you need to look at this hermit mode goddess god person right um for me i feel i see a female and i feel like she is saying like follow the light into the shadows seek out guidance here seek out solitude here because it's so rare that in this world we're in that we do get that time to ourselves that we do get that privacy because so many people want to rip that away from you and take it away from you, especially when you don't have a lot of money, especially when you don't have a lot of resources, especially when the little things that you do have are so in risk of being taken away from you at any second. So that with all the war and famine and disease in the world, right? So that's why I'm saying your oasis is your place to go. She's saying go to your oasis. She's saying stay in hermit mode if you want longer. Stay in solitude if you want to. You don't have to go out every time. Also, you don't have to invite people into your oasis. I feel like that's kind of the the thing here. It's like people are like, go out more, go out more, express yourself. Well, maybe I have what I need and I don't need to go out all the time. Maybe I don't want to go out and get sick. Maybe I just want to stay in right now. Maybe I just want to work on my cards right now. So that's what I'm saying is like people trying to push you and nudge you and nudge you into your uncomfortable area and the uncomfortableness of things. You go at your own pace. Don't have other people telling you what to do, okay? And if you're introverted like me, you don't like going out all the time. And you also don't like hosting all the time, too. That's the other aspect of someone who's, like, introverted. Um, is we don't like going out all the time. And we don't like hosting all the time. Every now and then. Um, some people have had that lifestyle where they were like forced to be out all the time, doing events, hosting events, or just out socializing 24 seven. Maybe they're very socially um, energetic, like uh, extroverted parents, but they were born an in, in, uh, introverted person. So like, it, it depends on who you are really, honestly. I look at this card and I see like hermit mode, solitude, meditation, uh, spiritual connectivity, nurturing your mind, your body, and your spirit. If you're feeling under the weather, don't go out, stay in, you know, turn on a rainbow forest background and sip on some wine and make your favorite dinner for yourself and binge watch your favorite show. One of mine is survivors. Come join me for a survivor party or whatever. I'll they be there with you in spirit. But like, whatever the case is, is like, you have to do what you like to do. You can't be being told what to do. That's not a, 
be encouraged to do things that make you happy. That's all you should be being told to do. Not go out of your comfort zone, go do something crazy and unexpected. It's like, what's the point in that? Honestly, there's more risk than reward if I do that. So again, you know, follow the light into your oasis. She's showing you the way. She wants you to refresh your oasis. She wants you to nurture yourself and she wants you to gather your strength before you go out in the world and go do crazy adventures and have yourself a huge giant new lifestyle or whatever the case may be. I don't know. But um, either way, you probably are just one of those people that are like me and you're super introverted. And I always use the term anti-butterfly, which has probably has already been coined. That phrase has already been coined on Sheen, but I still like to use it because it's a good one. It's a good I guess analogy or something for explaining um, people who are like this unicorn energy and hermit mode energy like me. All right, love and light always. <laughs> and I will be moving on to card number two very soon. All right, hi, pile two, our card two or whatever it is that we're doing here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, but anyways, I just gotta like laugh sometimes, you know, when you get those like. Uh, just weird coincidental synchronicities. <laughs> mm. Okay, so we have here the Kaladahara. Okay, she's the goddess of um, good judgment when it comes to aesthetic. Okay, and we also have here, this is the world of dreams. Okay, so not only are we going to take a trip down dreamland, dreamland here, <laughs> a trip into dreamland so to speak but we also are going to be using these really cool aesthetically pleasing <laughs> cards the phantom wise tarot okay so this is a dream uh themed deck for analyzing dreams okay and if you want to pause the video and take a read at this you can okay and um this is the introduction here okay so, yeah, so we're going to be getting started here, and this is going to be the, um, we're going to do the down the rabbit hole spread, because I keep seeing that pop up in Capricorn horoscopes. so I don't know if you're a Capricorn like me, but I think it's very interesting that this keeps popping up a lot. So why don't we go down the rabbit hole? What's the big deal? Like getting stuck in your emotions. Who cares? No, I'm just like, don't get stuck in your emotions, but um, express them. Yes, please do that. So an outlook spread based on the Wonderland inspired full card for chasing intriguing bunnies into unknown depths. Okay, so card number one, the fool, the current's current possession. So we're going to take a look at what the fool of this uh, reading is. And we're going to analyze it. So we have the Three of Swords. Okay, so let's analyze the Three of Swords, shall we? Okay, so your heart has some swords in it. Hmm. Wonder why that could be. Let's see. Um. Multiple swords run through a large heart, a heart pierced and broken, where soft meets sharp with pain-filled consequences. A time for understanding pain, a need to cut the heart of the matter, or to the heart of the matter, that is, and then sorrow and trauma, mental turmoil that time and care will mend. Okay, so maybe your aesthetic, um, so if you know anything about, basically aesthetic is like, um, your style, okay? So for me, I'm really into like the whole like tarot card themed style. Huh? Wonder what gave that away. Uh, but maybe you're having a hard time finding your aesthetic, you know? I love working with different colors and making collages. I'm big on collages. Um, pinks and purples and like pastel colors and flowery light, like bright co summery colors and things like that. Um, I'm not really a like dark color person when it comes to like dark tones, but I, I honestly like, well, 
will like explore things because this is my space to explore, right? So that's kind of what you need to do here is you need to explore and find out what your aesthetic is. Like there's cottage core, there's fairy core, there's, um, I've seen a lot of like browns and golds, right? I'm more of like a purpley <laughs> kind of person. <laughs> If you couldn't tell, I like purple a lot, purple and pinks a lot, okay? So that's what I'm saying here, okay, is like you have to go where your color and your eye is drawn to and like follow that. Even this white crystal has like a little purple crystal amethyst here, okay? Um, so it's all about the, like finding your aesthetic, okay? And your dreams can reveal those aesthetics too okay so what color are your dreams right are you having black and white dreams I personally don't think I've ever had a black and white dream ever but some people might um, uh, my dreams tend to be like dark purples and grays and like um, like kind of like think of like dusk till dawn and <laughs> sort of color schemes on those time periods um but we're gonna find out we're gonna explore this more okay don't worry too much about the whole turmoil and trauma of of anything right now because we're gonna figure out more about that colors have huge representation as well into feelings and emotions um so uh, down the rabbit hole we go okay card number two the rabbit the short-term goal or situation Okay, so you have here the King of Swords, okay? So this is only a short-term situation with the King of Swords. What kind of energy is he bringing in to this? Let's see here. Could be a masculine energy that's very dominant energy. Um, that could be giving off certain feelings and emotions um a serious crown figure sits on their throne a raven perched above a sharp mind with a sharp sword a time for high intellect and high standards and high energy a person who is reasonable and level-headed a seeker of harmony and diplomacy a thoughtful balanced problem solver okay so the this king of swords is obviously helping you solve your problems and figure it out right Okay, so um, you're not alone here, obviously. So what's going to happen as a result of this? The Ace of Pentacles. Oh, very nice. So as a result of moving past the turmoil, and mer mer ah, sorry, moving past the trauma, okay, um, of not knowing where your feelings are at, where you're headed here, the King of Swords energy comes in to be like, hmm, let me help you solve this problem. I can help you with this. Okay? And the Ace of Pentacles is going to be the result of this help and support. Okay? So the Ace of Pentacles, okay, obviously is, wow. Okay. That is the cat. A, okay, a warning or a caution. Okay, let's find out what this is. Whoa, let's see. It's interesting. A five-pointed star surrounded by curling vines. A time of new opportunities and chances for growth and financial gain. Investments for the future. Taking advantage of opportunities. Resources are at hand. New pieces of puzzles and small elements that will become greater. Seeds planted ready to grow. So that's actually like kind of the opposite of... <laughs> the war like of a warning or a caution <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense all right card number four the rabbit hole that which is upcoming it doesn't even make no sense okay the two of pentacles um okay the two of pentacles now this is supposed to be the rabbit hole that which is upcoming okay a skilled poodle stands suddenly on a ball which balancing another upon its nose precarious in practice they keep themselves aloft a situation requiring dexterity and flexibility agility and adaptation a time for balancing both work and play multitasking remembering to have fun and growing confidence and talents 
that is upcoming. <laughs> that is a good thing. So your talent could be in creating a specific type of aesthetic that no one has ever created before. Something totally different, totally like no one's just no one's done it. It's new. And I think the caution or the warning is that because it might be so new is you might not see the Ace of Pentacles right away. You might not see the money come in right away. Um, if you're trying to um, manifest like making money out of creating a brand new aesthetic that no one's ever seen or heard of before, there could be a, a you know, a time passing where people have to still get used to it because it's so niche i feel like so you don't have, don't give up on it obviously because it's gonna prove to be lucrative it's gonna prove to make you some kind of wealth for yourself but it hasn't come in yet then you have the three of pentacles okay okay so the three of pentacles uh, this is the fall, that which is unexpected. So you're not expecting this Three of Pentacles energy at all, really. Let's see where this is coming from. So this is three intricate stars are surrounded by carefully crafted carved knots, orange angles and intersections that have been studied and planned, and manipulating physical forms and designs, being competent and able to accomplish tasks, craftsmanship and skilled labor, a time for cooperation, sharing and teamwork, focusing on the details. Wow. So this is all about your like craft, like what makes you money or like if you are like somebody who makes candles, maybe you're going to make money that way. I just made this candle for myself by the way um not trying to sell them just yet <laughs> um but anyways um or maybe you make um you know handbags or i don't know there's so many cool artists out there these days so um but this is about you working very hard at your craft and making it beautiful and like complete and unique all to your own personal style and aesthetic is like another word for style so um, you're working on it and you're trying to make it all come together here and you're, you're not giving up on it, which is great. Don't give up on it. Okay. And then we have here, um, you're not expecting to make money from this, but you will. I think you will. I, I think once you keep going at it, then, you know, it will create abundance for you. Um, the underground, that which must be traversed and explored or overcome, Okay, maybe we got to overcome something first in order to get this to happen here. Wow, the world card. Wow. Okay. So, okay, you got to explore the world first. You got to see it. See the world. Let's see here. Wow, this is a very cool reading. Okay, let's see the world card here. We have. Let's see the world. A familiar figure who is now more than a child stands holding the tree of the world in her hands. A rabbit has found mysteries have been unraveled and stories have reached their con conclusions. They stand accomplished and triumphant, ready and waiting for new adventures to begin. This is the completion of a cycle, a time of having the world at your fingertips. The universe whole and harmonious with ever-expanding horizons. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, so you have to explore this and you have to become, like, you have to just get all of your, I guess you, if you're working on some, like, creating something here, you have to get, you have to, like, get more information or, like, more inspiration. You have to see more things, do more things, <laughs> um, because that's how you draw in your inspiration for creating. That's really beautiful. Okay, now what do we have here? The world is the last card. I'm not making this up. Look, this is literally the order it goes in. The world, okay. The ultimate outcome or result, the core of the journey. Wow. The Ace of Wands. Wow, the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Wands. This is the outcome here. Okay, so the Wands we have... Um, let's see the wands, the wands, okay. Let's 
So these are things that may be encountered in this realm. Inspiration, ignited passions. Wow. Some volatile energy. Tools of manifestation, creativity, curious cats. Oh my gosh. The Ace of Wands. A starting point, a magic wand to grasp onto, a tool for channeling energy, a torch to light the path for new ideas and new adventures, a moment of excitement and inspiration, sparkling with new ideas and wonders. Time to put a creative vision into action. Wow, that's so beautiful energy. And there you have your, you have your Empress energy and you have your Two of Wands energy. All right, to help you. You're like the witch with the black cat. Look. Okay. So, um... Yeah, so this is it for you. Like going out and seeing the world, gaining new ideas, gaining new perspective, and then coming back and channeling that into your art, into your form of expression, into your creativity, um, so that you can get paid to do it, right? Which would be the ideal situation is someone pay you for your time <laughs> and your energy, your hard work. So you have the Empress energy and you have the Two of Wands energy. Okay, so we're leaving off with the Empress energy here. Um, a seated figure in a long gown watches as things grow. A flower crown sits upon their head. Another single bloom held in hand. Vines curl around their feet and roses spring from the ground. Moving ever upwards, everything here is bright and blooming and nurturing. Creative and fertile and alive. Grounded and growing, sensual and sensitive. Now is the time of beauty and art and life. Blossoming and abundant. Beautiful. Beautiful energy. And then you have the two of wands here, your little black cat here, helping you out. A black cat sits in the branches of a tree, gazing out upon the world. A small creature in a high place with big dreams, balanced, waiting, a time for seeking, yearning, daydreaming, envisioning the future, preparation, laying plans, and envisioning goals, looking out for new adventures. Wow, that's amazing. That is really, truly beautiful energy right there. And that, so that's what you have for yourself right there, is you have this beautiful exploration to go on, try new ideas, try new color palettes or color schemes to build that aesthetic to, um, you know, incorporate your dream world into your real world. If you're, you know, if you're inspired by blues and blacks and whites and uh, purples and pinks, then move into that color scheme, move into that aesthetic. If you're inspired by yellows and greens and baby blues, then move into that. Try it out. See how it makes you feel and like explore it and just there's different ways of creating and using much certain materials to um, curate a beautiful expression of who you are I guess is what I'm trying to say anyways love and light always thanks for watching card two bye Hey there, hi there, card number three, uh, reparenting yourself, okay? This is such a beautiful energy because it not just, it doesn't just mean to love and nurture and be kind to others, but it mostly means to be love and kind and nurturing to yourself, okay? Alrighty, being a parent doesn't mean just being an actual, like, physical parent to actual children. It can mean just parenting yourself and loving yourself and giving yourself that self-love that you need and that self-care that you need um, to feel good, okay? And to stay healthy, too. Most importantly, you got to stay healthy, right? Um, so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to use my Heaven and Earth tarot deck, okay? Because I feel like there's some major controversy when it comes to um, heaven and earth, okay? Some people believe in heaven, others do not. Um, I am of a... I'm of a personal belief that heaven is more of like a mindset, um, and it's a spiritual journey that people can go on with both their minds, bodies, and spirits, um, and it can mean a lot to someone's soul when it comes to nourishing your soul and loving yourself that they believe in like heaven and they believe in earth and they believe in God and the devil and all that stuff and angels, and that's really cool. If that's what works for you, then that's what works for you. Um, you know, and then there are people who probably don't believe in that stuff, and they're more very, like, theoretically, like, logical, kind of like a, imagine like a Vulcan, uh, Spock from Star Trek type person, okay? So let's take a look at these Heaven and Earth cards, see what's going on here. 
Whoa, starting off with the Ace of Pentacles. Good for you. You picked the right card. <laughs> so you got the Ace of Pentacles. So you're all about this Ace of Pentacles energy, okay? You're all about creating that wealth for yourself um, so you can afford to take care of yourself. Am I right? Um, ooh, and then you have Harmonious Change. Okay, so you have the Two of Pentacles as well. And you have the yin and yang here too with this coinciding here. So, um, you know, this is obviously something that um, can represent a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, especially if you have yin and yang here, right? The light and the dark, right? Think of Star Wars, okay? Uh, material success. Wow. You really want material success for yourself. <laughs> You want to do it in a just way, though. You want to do it in a way where as you are um, earning this material success, you want to um, balance the scales of those who have not gained material success, such as yourself. And you want to be able to pass that down to them and share that wealth with them. You know, that's a beautiful thing. It really is. Be wanting to... Uh, choose that right because once you have the ace of pentacles once you have like your dream job and you're making the big money right and you're taking care of yourself right you might get inspired here where yes you've built this beautiful <laughs> safety security of beauty and all your favorite things around yourself right but you ought in order to love yourself and to make yourself feel special but you also want to um keep that like balance of like as much as I am receiving I want to at least be giving a, a portion of that that could be coming from like you know sharing with donations to charities that can be maybe getting gifts for your family and friends during Christmas time if they're not doing so great as you so that can come from many different aspects because you don't want to just like be very materialistic and very um like selfish and not share the wealth so to speak you want to like an equal give and take i feel like um yeah okay perfect world in your perfect world of taking care of yourself um and loving yourself you are giving to others in need and you're also keeping that harmonious balance between like if i feel like i'm being led to pay for something or like pay for dinner for everybody because i know they're not doing as good as me or whatever the case may be i mean you've been granted this beautiful abundance here of money and wealth so you you obviously want to do something nice for others not just for yourself which that's your perfect ideal world is that there's an equal give and take right so as you receive you want to be able to give as well and sh and share that feeling and generosity with others you have here great strength here okay this comes from a place of being through it right you've been through the war the battle you have like this guy he has like one eye left from his travels and he's staring here okay with the nine of wands here and he's standing in his power here okay great strength here um it's a really good energy here and you have princess of cups energy too you have the great the great strength here with the princess of cups you have a man of great strength here who's seen some stuff he's been through some uh shit in his life some personal difficulties in his life but he's come out so much stronger because of it and he wants i feel like you guys want to share in this uh ace of pentacles um you know wealth together because i feel like you both have the same vision and goals in mind and you guys both have a beautiful love for each other there's a swan here um you know she's obviously like has these uh abilities here and these gifts that she's able to create and manifest um this like abundance this money and wealth you also have a king of cups too so maybe like on the one hand you have the like um the great strength here doesn't just come for you it comes for your king here too you're the princess and the king here 
okay? So it's an interesting dynamic, really, because you, you could be the masculine, they could be the feminine, but you're both, like, you're both able to, um, like, fill your cup, so to speak, with this, like, new energy and this new soulful, like, love that you guys have for each other. So I just want to see where this energy is um, headed right now. We have here strife. Ooh, that's not good. Okay. Uh, wealth. Okay, that's good. <laughs> strife over wealth. Yeah. Okay, rest from strife. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Okay, so I think that honestly what's happening here is you are focused on reparenting yourself you are focused on loving yourself caring for yourself nurturing yourself and that has created um some wealth for you because you've done this and um basically um you obviously in a perfect world ideally would want you know the strength the great strength from um you know for either yourself or a masculine person um you see yourself as a princess okay of cups someone who can take care of yourself um emotionally mentally mentally physically and this knight of cups obviously can take care of himself or i mean king of cups can obviously take care of himself um, mentally and emotionally as well, but there's strife because, um, the, the problem is that, um, with the, um, five of wands, there's a problem <laughs> with this okay and it has to do with wealth here okay maybe this is generational wealth um that be, could be causing this strife here um maybe you're able to create your own wealth for yourself and your own emotional security for yourself but there's like a third party that is not able to do this so they rely on you and this king for that support and it causes strife because you don't, there's a block here. Okay, maybe you're not, you don't want to share as much. But you have to retreat here. And you have to rest from the strife. You can't just be going at it alone. You can't just be going at it full speed ahead. Getting involved in the strife. Yeah, so I just want to figure out, okay, so the Five of Wands energy, that is literally, like, um, the, sh the, the fighting, the arguing, I feel like, fighting and over, arguing over money, maybe, but this Princess of Cups and this King of Cups energy tells me that they're both, like, two very emotionally sound people, like, I just don't understand why the need is for the conflict, um, yeah, so... <laughs> It's rivalries, frustration, battles, conflicts, what may not be needed, might not even be known. Yeah, like there's no point in fighting over this wealth and this abundance because look of how much there is. There's the Ace of Pentacles, there is the harmonious cup, uh, change of balance of money and wealth evenly being distributed. This female is obviously giving out money to those less fortunate. So, I don't think there, you need, I mean, that could be you. You could be giving out money to people that are in need of it. And you also have an abundance of wealth here. So, I don't know what the point of the strife is, honestly. And it looks like you have here um, the retreat from the strife. So, at the end of the day, don't get involved in the conflict over money and just stay out of it. That's kind of the energy I'm picking up on. Yeah, sorrow. Because I feel like for a lot of you, this might have caused some Three of Swords energy. If there was too much arguing and fighting over money, you just chose, nope, I'm going to stay out of it. I'm not going to be a part of that. Because it's too too much sorrow is involved. Too much conflict over it. Of who gets what? What's the fair share? What's this? What's that? It's like, just stay out of it so it doesn't cause you so much sorrow and pain and misery. Peace.
finding peace and solitude and uh, swiftness here with the seven of wands I guess it looks like seven of wands yeah so this is um, remaining strong and steadfast when tested holding ground standing firm on yielding um, asserting a position persevering standing up for oneself and one's beliefs and then a time to take a stand okay maintain maintain um, boundaries when it comes to that and don't worry about this three of swords energy because you are just gonna walk away and have some peace in your life for once in your life <laughs> and the three of swords energy doesn't really bother you or face you um because you're gonna just walk away from that and find peace with the two of swords energy um yeah so uh, a time of soft conflict temper and fleeting not then past me to the scene um, so a moment of, uh, clarity. So you're going to just go into peace here with that energy for sure. You don't need that in your life because material world here or material work here. So you can already do the work. You can already create wealth for yourself. So why bother with that other stuff? Right. Honestly. Um, Three of Pentacles. Yeah, so. So that is um, this intricate stars are surrounded by carefully um, skilled labor, craftsmanship, a time of cooperation, sharing.